A steam car is a light car powered by a steam engine. Steam locomotives, or steam engines capable of propelling themselves along either road or rails, were developed around 100 years earlier than internal combustion engine, although their weight restricted them to agricultural and heavy haulage work on roads. The light steam car was developed simultaneously with cars powered by internal combustion engines, as both engineering and road building matured. As the steam car could use the vast experience of steam engines already developed with steam locomotives, it initially had the advantage. In 1900 the steam car was broadly superior and even held absolute land speed records. By 1920 the internal combustion engine had progressed to a degree of refinement that made the steam car obsolete. Not many steam cars have been built since the 1920s, although the technology is practical, and projects intermittently occur to create a contemporary steam car with contemporary levels of convenience, performance and efficiency. The greatest technical challenges to the steam car have focused on its boiler. This represents much of the total mass of the vehicle, making the car heavy, and requires careful attention from the driver, although even the cars of 1900 had considerable automation to manage this. The single largest restriction is the need to supply fiat water to the boiler. This must either be carried and frequently replenished, or the car must also be fitted with a condenser, a further weight and inconvenience. The steam car does have advantages over internal combustion-powered cars, although most of these are now less important than in the early 20th century. The engine is smaller and lighter than an internal combustion engine. It is also better suited to the speed and torque characteristics of the axle, thus avoiding the need for the heavy and complex transmission required for an internal combustion engine. The car is also quieter, even without a silencer. Technology A steam engine is an external combustion engine, as opposed to an internal combustion engine. While gasoline-powered ICE cars have an operational thermal efficiency of 15% to 30%, early automotive steam units were capable of only about half this efficiency. A significant benefit of the ECE is that the fuel burner can be configured for very low emissions of carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and unburned carbon in the exhaust, thus avoiding pollution. Steam-powered and electric cars outsold gasoline-powered ones in many U.S. states prior to the invention of the electric starter, since internal combustion cars relied on a hand crank to start the engine, which was difficult and occasionally dangerous to use, as improper cranking could cause a backfire capable of breaking the arm of the operator. Electric cars were popular to some extent, but had a short range, and could not be charged on the road if the batteries ran low. Early steam cars, once working pressure was attained, could be instantly driven off with high acceleration. But they typically take several minutes to start from cold, plus time to get the burner to operating temperature. To overcome this, development has been directed toward flash boilers, which heat a much smaller quantity of water to get the vehicle started, and, in the case of Doble cars, spark ignition diesel burners. Early steam cars Although the first applications of steam to propelling a road vehicle were attempted in the 17th century, it was not until the advent of high-pressure steam engines, in the early 19th century, that such vehicles became practical. Limitations in manufacturing technology and the poor condition of road surfaces meant that no steam car suitable for personal transportation was created until the end of the 19th century. There was an unsubstantiated story that a pair of Yorkshiremen, engineer Robert Fornis and his cousin, physician James Ashworth had a steam carriage running in 1788, after being granted a British patent, number 1674 of December 1788, crops up. An illustration of it even appeared in her copyright's book Tintin Reconti l'Histoire de l'Automobile. Equals arma copyright dao copyright e bola copyright e equals. From 1873 to 1883 Armour Copyright Dow Copyright E Bola Copyright E of Le Mans built a series of steam-powered passenger vehicles able to carry 6 to 12 people at speeds up to 60 km per hour, with such names as Rapide and Loba Copyright Asante. In Bola Copyright E's vehicles the boiler was mounted behind the passenger compartment with the engine at the front of the vehicle, driving the differential through a shaft with chain drive to the rear wheels. 
the driver sat behind the engine and steered by means of a wheel mounted on a vertical shaft. The layout more closely resembled later motor cars than other steam vehicles. Equals Cedar Home Brothers equals, in 1892, painter jar paragraph N.S. Cedarholm and his brother, Andrew Copyright, a blacksmith, designed their first steam car, a two-seater, introducing a condenser in 1894. He planned to use it for transportation between their home in Istad and their summer house outside town. Unfortunately the automobile was destroyed in Sweden a Euro unregistered trademark S first automobile accident but the Cedarholm brothers soon built a second, improved version of their steam car reusing many parts from the first one. The car is preserved in a museum in Skurup. Equals to Dion and Bouton steam vehicles equals. The development by Sir Pollitt of the flash boiler brought about the appearance of various diminutive steam tricycles and quadricycles during the late 1880s and early 1890s, notably by de Dion and Bouton. These successfully competed in long-distance races, but soon met with stiff competition for public favor from the internal combustion engine cars being developed, notably by Peugeot, that quickly cornered most of the popular market. With the increasing popularity of internal combustion engine cars, proponents of the steam car had to fight a long rearguard battle that was to last into modern times. Early 20th century. Steam cars outnumbered other forms of propulsion among very early cars. In the U.S. in 1902, 485 of 909 new car registrations were steamers. From 1899 Mobile had 10 branches and 58 dealers across the U.S. The center of U.S. steamer production was New England, where 38 of the 84 manufacturers were located. Examples include White, Eclipse, Cotter, Crouch, Hood, Kidder, Century, and Skeen. By 1903, 43 of them were gone. In 1923, Brooks opened for business, lasting until 1926. Equals Toledo Steam Carriage equals in 1900 the American Bicycle Company of Toledo, Ohio created a 6.25 horsepower Toledo steam carriage. The American Bicycle Company was one of the enterprises within Colonel Albert Pope's large conglomerate of bicycle and motor vehicles manufacturers. The Toledo steam carriage was a very well-made, high-quality machine where every component, bar the tires, bell, Instruments and lights were made within the dedicated 245,000 square feet factory in Toledo, Ohio. The Toledo is considered to be one of the best steam cars produced at the time. The engine was particularly robust and the two, three inches diameter X4 stoke pistons employed piston style valves instead of D valves thus ensuring better balance and reduced leakage of steam. In September 1901 two Toledo steamers, one Model B and one Class E, were entered by the American Bicycle Company into the New York to Buffalo Endurance Contest of mid-September 1901. There were 36 cars in Class B and three in Class E. The Class B Toledo won the gross point race. On January 4, 1902 a specially built Toledo steam carriage was the first automobile to forge a trail from Flagstaff, Arizona to the south rim of the Grand Canyon a distance of 67 miles. As a publicity exercise the trip was to assess the potential of starting a steam bus service but the anticipated afternoon journey took three days due to problems with supplies of the wrong fuel. Though the Toledo towed a trailer filled with additional water and fuel supplies the four participants omitted to take any food. One, the journalist Winfield Hogaboon wrote up an amusing article in the Los Angeles Herald two weeks later. The previous December, on 19 1901 the company changed from the American Bicycle Company to the newly formed International Motor Car Company to concentrate on steam and gasoline-driven models with electric vehicles being made by the separate Waverley Electric Company. Both steam and gasoline models were manufactured but as the public favored the gasoline models and steam carriage sales were slow steam carriage production ceased in July 1902 and gasoline-driven models were then made under the name Pope Toledo. Total production of the steamers was between 285 and 325 units, as confirmed by a letter from the International Motor Car Company bookkeeper to the firm's accountant in June 1902. Equals locomobile runabout equals. 
what is considered by many to be the first marketable popular steam car appeared in 1899 from the Locomobile Company of America, located in Watertown, Massachusetts and from 1900 in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Locomobile manufactured several thousand of its runabout model in the period 1899 to 1903, designed around a motor design leased from the Stanley Steamer Company. The company ceased producing steam cars in 1903 and changed to limited production, internal combustion-powered luxury automobiles. In 1922 it was acquired by Durand Motors and discontinued with the failure of the parent company in 1929. Equals white steamer equals. The white steamer was manufactured in Cleveland, Ohio from 1900 until 1910 by the White Motor Company. Equals Stanley Steamer equals. Perhaps the best known and best selling steam car was the Stanley Steamer, produced from 1896 to 1924. Between 1899 and 1905, Stanley outsold all gasoline powered cars and was second only to the electric cars of the Columbia Automobile Company in the U.S. It used a compact fire tube boiler to power a simple double-acting two-cylinder engine. Because of the phenomenal torque available at all engine speeds, the steam car's engine was typically geared directly to the rear axle, with no clutch or variable speed transmission required. Until 1914, Stanley steam cars vented their exhaust steam directly to the atmosphere necessitating frequent refilling of the water tank. After 1914, all Stanleys were fitted with a condenser, which considerably reduced their water consumption. In 1906 the land speed record was broken by a Stanley steam car, piloted by Fred Marriott, which achieved 127 miles per hour at Ormond Beach, Florida. This annual week-long speed week was the forerunner of today's Daytona 500. This record was not exceeded by any car until 1910. Equals Doble Steam Car Equals Attempts were made to bring more advanced steam cars on the market, the most remarkable being the Doble Steam Car which shortened startup time very noticeably by incorporating a highly efficient monotube steam generator to heat a much smaller quantity of water along with effective automation of burner and water feed control. By 1923, Doble steam cars could be started from cold with the turn of a key and driven off in 40 seconds or less. When the boiler had achieved maximum working pressure, the burner would cut out until pressure had fallen to a minimum level, whereupon it would reignite. By this means the car could achieve around 15 miles per gallon of kerosene despite its weight in excess of 5,000 pounds. Ultimately, despite their undoubted qualities, Doble cars failed due to poor company organization and high initial cost. Equals Alina Steam Car Equals, the Alina Steam Products Company of Indianapolis, Indiana began making steam trucks in 1920. The Alina Steam Car was an American car planned for manufacture in 1922. Only two cars were built, both touring models. Each had a wheelbase of 126 inches. The company went into receivership and closed in 1923. Equals Davis Steam Car Equals, the Davies Steam Motors Incorporated of Detroit was an American steam car manufacturer formed in March 1921 by Merrill Davis, E. M. Bliss, F. D. Syerberg, and A. B. Eggert. Only a prototype was built and even the existence of this is in doubt. A twin-cylinder car, it was announced as having a 120-inch wheelbase. The touring car was listed at $2,300. Equals Endurance Steam Car Equals, the Endurance Steam Car was a steam car manufactured in the United States from 1922 until 1924. The company had its origins in the Coat Steam Car and began production on the East Coast before shifting operations to Los Angeles in 1924. There. One single touring car was made using a 1923 L car 6-60 body before the factory moved again, this time to Dayton, Ohio where one more car was built, a sedan, before the company folded. Equals decline equals, with the introduction of the electric starter, the internal combustion engine became more popular than steam, but the internal combustion engine was not necessarily superior in performance, range, fuel economy and emissions. 
Some steam enthusiasts feel steam has not received its share of attention in the field of automobile efficiency. Assembly line mass production by Henry Ford dramatically reduced the cost of owning a conventional automobile, was also a strong factor in the steam car's demise as the Model T was both cheap and reliable. Additionally, during the heyday of steam cars, the internal combustion engine made steady gains in efficiency, matching and then surpassing the efficiency of a steam engine when the weight of a boiler is factored in. 1940s and 50s equals Charles Keene equals in the 1940s Charles Keene began constructing a steam car with the intention of restarting steam car manufacturing. Keene's family had a long history of involvement with steam propulsion going back to his great-great-grandfather in the 1830s, who helped build early steam locomotives. His first car, a Plymouth Coupe used a Stanley engine. Indiana 1948-1949 Keene employed Abner Doble to create a more powerful steam engine, AV4. He used this in Ladari Victress S4 bodied sports car. Both these cars are still in existence. Keene died in 1969 before completing a further car. His papers and patents were destroyed at that time. Equals Paxton Phoenix equals. Apna Doble developed the Doble Ultimax engine for the Paxton Phoenix steam car, built by the Paxton Engineering Division of McCulloch Motors Corporation, Los Angeles. Its sustained maximum power was 120 bhp. A Ford Coupe was used a test bed for the engine. The project was eventually dropped in 1954. Equals other steam cars equals, through the 1950s various steam cars were constructed, usually by enthusiasts. Among those mentioned were Cal Williams' 1950 Ford conversion, Forrester Detrick's 1957 Detrick S101 prototype, and Harry Peterson Stanley Powered Peterson. The Detrick was constructed by Detrick, William H. Mooling, and Lee Gallic who designed the engine based on a Stanley. 1960s air pollution measures. Equals impact of Californian legislation equals, in 1967 California established the California Air Resources Board and began to implement legislation to dramatically reduce exhaust emissions. This prompted renewed interest in alternative fuels for motor vehicles and a resurgence of interest in steam-powered cars in the state. California Highway Patrol the idea for having patrol cars fitted with steam engines stemmed for an informal meeting in March 1968 of members of the California Assembly Transportation Committee. In the discussion, Carson V. Egg, a lawyer attached to the committee, suggested that six cars be fitted with steam engines for testing by California District Police Chiefs. A bill was passed by the legislature to fund the trial. In 1969 the California Highway Patrol initiated the project under Inspector David S. Lewis to investigate the feasibility of using steam-engined cars. Initially General Motors had agreed to pay a selected vendor $20,000 towards the cost of developing the Rankine cycle engine, and up to $100,000 for outfitting six Oldsmobile Delmont 88s as operational patrol vehicles. This deal fell through because the Rankine engine manufacturers rejected the General Motors offer. The plan was revised and two 1969 Dodge Polaris were to be retrofitted with steam engines for testing. One car was to be modified by Don Johnson of Thermodynamic Systems Incorporated and the other by industrialist, William P. Lears, Lear Motors Incorporated. At the time the California state legislature was introducing strict pollution control regulations for automobiles and the chair of the Assembly Transportation Committee, John Francis Foran, was supportive of the idea. The committee also was proposing to test four steam-powered buses in the San Francisco Bay Area that year. Instead of a Polara, thermodynamic systems, were given a late-model Oldsmobile Delmont 88. Lears were given a Pilara but it does not appear to have been built. Both firms were given six months to complete their projects with Lears being due for completion on August 1, 1969. Neither car had been completed by the due date and in November 1969 Lear was reported as saying the car would be ready in three months. Lear's only known retrofit was a Chevrolet Monte Carlo unrelated to the project. As for the project, it seems to have never been completed with Lear pulling out by December. Indy Cars, 
Both Johnson and Lear had contemplated constructing steam-powered cars for the Indy 500, Johnson first in the early 1960s when with controlled steam dynamics and in 1968 with thermodynamic systems and Lear in 1969. A third steam racing car was contemplated by a consortium of Planning Research Corporation and Andy Granatelli of STP Corporation. Lear proceeded with the idea and constructed a car, but ran out of funds, while trying to develop the engine. The car is thought to be at the National Automobile and Truck Museum of the United States in Auburn, Indiana. Johnson was also noted as working on a steam-powered helicopter. William D. Thompson, 69-year-old retired San Diego automotive engineer, also announced he planned to enter a steam-powered race car in the 500. Thompson was working on a $35,000 steam-powered luxury car and he intended to use the car's engine in the race car. He had claimed that he had almost 250 orders for his cars. By comparison Rolls-Royce's cost about $17,000 at the time. National Air Pollution Control Competition In 1969 the National Air Pollution Control Administration announced a competition for a contract to design a practical passenger car steam engine. Five firms entered. They were the Consortium of Planning Research Corporation and STP Corporation. Battle Memorial Institute, Columbus, Ohio. Continental Motors Corporation, Detroit. Ford Aeronautical Division of Linktemco Vought, Dallas. And Thermo Electron Corporation, Waltham, Massachusetts. 1969 Grams Concept Steam Cars. In 1969 GM introduced two experimental steam-powered cars. One was the SE-124 based on a converted Chevrolet Chevel and the other was designated SE-101 based on the Pontiac Grand Prix. The SE-124 had its standard gasoline engine replaced with a 50-horsepower power Bessler steam engine, using the 1920 Doble patents. The SE-101 was fitted with a 160-horsepower steam engine developed by GM Engineering. 1970s Oil Crisis equals Clean Air Car Race equals, In October 1969, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the California Institute of Technology put out a challenge for a race August 1970 from Cambridge, Massachusetts to Pasadena, California for any college that wanted to participate in. The race was open for electric, steam, turbine power, and internal combustion engines, liquid-fueled, gaseous-fueled engines, and hybrids. Two steam-powered cars entered the race. University of California, San Diego's modified AMC Javelin and Worcester Polytechnic Institute's converted 1970 Chevrolet Chevel called the Tea Kettle. Both dropped out on the second day of the race. Equals Donald Healy equals with Lear pulling out of attempting to make steam car, Donald Healy decided to make a basic steam car technology more in line with Stanley or Doble and aimed at enthusiasts. He planned to have the car in production by 1971. Equals California legislation equals, the California Assembly passed legislation in 1972 to contract two companies to develop steam-powered cars. They were Aerojet Liquid Rocket Company of Sacramento and Steam Power Systems of San Diego. Aerojet installed a steam turbine into a Chevrolet Vega, while Steam Power Systems built the Dutcher, a car named after the company's founder, Cornelius Dutcher. Both cars were tested by 1974 but neither car went into production. The Dutcher is on display at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. Equals Ted Pritchard Falcon equals, Edward Pritchard created a steam-powered 1963 model Ford Falcon in 1972. It was evaluated by the Australian federal government and was also taken to the United States for promotional purposes. Equals Saab steam car and Renault equals, as a result of the 1973 oil crisis, Saab started a project in 1974, one, codenamed ULF headed by Dr. Ove Platel which made a prototype steam-powered car. The engine used an electronically controlled 28-pound multi-parallel circuit steam generator with 1 mm bore tubing and 16 gallons per hour firing rate which was intended to produce 160 horsepower continuous power, and was about the same size as a standard car battery. 
lengthy start-up times were avoided by using air compressed and stored when the car was running to power the car upon starting until adequate steam pressure was built up. The engine used a conical rotary valve made from pure boron nitride. To conserve water, a hermetically sealed water system was used. The project was cancelled and the project engineer, Ove Platel, started a company Renota with his son Peter Platel to continue its development. Renota is developing a steam hybrid that uses the exhaust heat from an ordinary petrol engine to power a small steam engine, with the aim of reducing fuel consumption by 20%. In 2008 truck manufacturers Scania and Volvo were said to be interested in the project. Equals Pelland Steam or Equals In 1974, the British designer Peter Pellandine produced the first Pelland steamer to a contract with the South Australian government. It had a fiberglass monocoque chassis and used a twin-cylinder double-acting compound engine. It has been preserved at the National Motor Museum at Birdwood, South Australia. In 1977 the Pelland MK2 steam car was built, this time by Pelland Engineering in the UK. It had a three-cylinder double-acting engine in a broad arrow configuration, mounted in a tubular steel chassis with a Kevlar body, giving a gross weight of just 1,050 pounds uncomplicated and robust. The steam engine was claimed to give trouble-free, efficient performance. It had huge torque at zero engine revs, and could accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour in under eight seconds. Pellandine made several attempts to break the land speed record for steam power, but was thwarted by technical issues. Pellandine moved back to Australia in the 1990s where he continued to develop the steamer. The latest version is the Mark IV. 1990s to date. Equals Engine and Steam Shell equals, from 1996, an R&D subsidiary of the Volkswagen Group called Engine and AG was developing a system called Z. It produced steam almost instantly without an open flame and took 30 seconds to reach maximum power from a cold start. Their third prototype, EZEE03, was a three-cylinder unit meant to fit in an Angstrom code of Fabia automobile. The EZEE03 was described as having a two-stroke engine of 1,000 cc displacement, producing up to 220 horsepower. Exhaust emissions were said to be far below the SULEV standard. It had an oilless engine with ceramic cylinder linings using steam instead of oil as a lubricant. However, Enginean found that the market was not ready for steam cars, so they opted instead to develop the steam chill power generator heating system based on similar technology. Steam car land speed record attempts. Equals Autocarost vaporizer equals, Ernest Kornsler. The owner of Autocarost approached Ross Hedrick in the fall of 1968 with the idea of installing a steam engine in Hedrick's 1964 Indy car for an attempt at the 1906 steam car record. Hedrick and Richard J. Smith joined Autocarost to design the engine. The car was readied for the 1969 Bonneville Speed Week, but was unable to run because an unexpected rainstorm made the salt flats too soggy. Equals Barber Nichols equals in 1985 Barber Nichols Engineering of Denver used a steam turbine they had designed for Lear and the Los Angeles City bus program to attempt to gain the steam-powered land speed record. The car was run at speed week on the Bonneville Salt Flats over a period of several years, eventually reaching a measured speed of 145.607 miles per hour one pass. A fire prevented the return run, and the speed was not recognized by the FIA. FIA land speed records are based on an average of two runs in opposite directions, taken within an hour of each other. Equals British Steam Car Challenge equals. On August 25, 2009, Team Inspiration of the British Steam Car Challenge broke the long-standing record for a steam vehicle set by a Stanley Steamer in 1906, setting a new speed record of 139.843 miles per hour at the Edwards Air Force Base in the Majave Desert of California. This was the longest standing automotive record in the world. It had been held for over 100 years. The car was driven by Charles Burnett III and reached a maximum speed of 136.103 mph on the first run and 151.085 mph on the second. On August 26, 2009 the same car, driven this time by Don Wales, 
the grandson of Sir Malcolm Campbell, broke a second record by achieving an average speed of 238.679 km per hour over two consecutive runs over a measured kilometer. This was also recorded and has since been ratified by the FIA. Equals Team Speed America equals, on September 6, 2014 Shuke Williams of Team Speed America attempted to break the current world record in their steam-powered streamliner. The car reached 147 miles per hour on its first run, but flipped and crashed when its braking chutes opened, Williams was injured in the accident and the car severely damaged. The car was powered by a Cyclone Mark V engine. In popular culture, Keith Roberts' alternate history novel Pavan makes many references to steam land transport. In this alternate history, the death of Queen Elizabeth I in 1588 allows the Catholic Church to dominate world history, and the Index Prohibitorum includes petrol vehicles with engines larger than 100 cc. The first chapter of the novel first describes steam transports made by Fodden. In the last chapter, Corfe Gate reference is made to 100 cc petrol powered butterfly cars, which rely as much on wind power as petrol engines for motive power. In addition, one of the knights of the castle is known to own a steam car a Euro specifically, a Bentley, which needs his tending during harsh winters to prevent the block from freezing and breaking. In Ward Moore's alternate history novella Bring the Jubilee, trackless locomotives referred to as minibles are used in wealthy nations for personal transportation. In this world, internal combustion was never discovered and machines are always powered by steam. In another alternate history novel The Two Georges, the authors Harry Turtledove and Richard Dreyfus describe a North America where steam cars are generally used and Richard Nixon is a used car dealer. Specific makes of steam car feature in other novels, such as The Chase by Clive Cussler. In Meredith Wilson's The Music Man, Coneman Harold Hill reveals that he used to be in the steam automobile business until someone actually invented one. In the movie Cars, Stanley Steamer is the founder of the town of Radiator Springs. See also References External links Hybrid-vehicle.org, The Steamers, The Steam Car Club of Great Britain, Technical Website About How Steam Cars Operate, The Steam Automobile Club of America, Stanley Register Online, a worldwide register of existing Stanley Steam Cars. The British Steam Car Challenge. Overview on an attempt to break the existing 101-year-old Steam Car World Land Speed Record. One Day Steam Car Conversion, where two teams in the UK TV series Scrap Heap Challenge converted junk cars into coal-fired steam cars. Steam 101.